Hi, I'm Jan Doyle. We're continuing our conversation today with the outstanding photographer, Cindy Pertigeo. She it is so amazing. And we're going to go back a little bit because during the break, she started telling me things that I wanted on the show. So Cindy, let's go back to this particular picture. You were pointing out to me that you didn't Photoshop out the imperfections. Could you explain that? Sure. I think that um, as as viewers and as humans, we are all imperfect. It's something that uh, runs through all of us. Um, we certainly all have weaknesses, and those are the things that make us unique. I often don't Photoshop out or clone or fix uh, the imperfections in the flowers that I shoot because I think it makes them stand out. I like flowers that have a broken petal. I like flowers where the stem is a little bit bent or leaning. Uh, you will see that throughout my body of work because I think it's important to let our differences make us unique and it's important to make our differences let a, it's important to let our differences make us strong. I just find that so inspirational. That that just resonates so much with me. It's, well, it's just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So I want to point out on this where you showed me during the break, mm -hmm. there is a, I want to make sure the pen is not there, there is a line here that you didn't clone out. And that could have been so easy to do. Correct. There's, you know, there's a little bit of, um, or you can point out, you take my pen So there's a little there. bit of imperfection in the petal here and there's some petals over here that are not quite perfect. That's okay. There's an imperfect petal here as well. Remember that I've been different all my life. I was immediately imperfect when I was born, but also when I was six years old, I was immediately not like everybody else. So I had a choice. I could let it drag me down, or I could let it be a strength for me. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. quite honestly, giving up was never on my radar. Mm -hmm. um, and the flowers show that as well. It's what makes them unique. If every chrysanthemum looked perfect, it would be kind of a boring conversation. Uh, because there are differences, it creates an emotional text for your photography. Inspiring, inspirational, no wonder that's the topic of your program. And I find, I'm finding for myself is that even though I heard your program, even though you sent me the text so I could prepare for the show, I'm finding I'm learning new and seeing it. And so if somebody has seen the program, going back and seeing it again would just be, but probably even be more rewarding. I've had some people, um, I've done the presentation several times now for camera clubs and with several to go this year. Um, and I've had people come back two or three times. And I think that it's a, I have a lot of men come up to me and, and say, thank you. Thank you for letting me feel. Thank you for letting me let go of trying to be perfect. Um, and, and that's, it's very endearing and it's very encouraging to me because I think that as people open, their photography gets more and more about them and they start to weave their own story through their images. They create a body of work. That is, that is amazing. We have um, another slide that I like to get to from before and when the director puts it up on, I, I remember which one we were talking about, but uh, can you tell us a little bit about this particular image? It's the image with um, two flowers that are, oh, I'm sorry, I, I was mistaken. It's, this is just beautiful. You used to prop here. Correct. I don't usually use containers uh, with my flowers only because for me it doesn't add to the story. There are people who do uh, containers very, very well. There's some great photographers in my area who do a good job yes, with that. Yes, they do. I know them. Um, I, it's my preference not to use them, but I did on this particular dahlia. Uh, this is a dahlia from um, outside on the lawn. And again, you'll find that I have that unbloomed bud, um, which there's so much energy contained in that. Uh, it's it, not quite sure what's going to happen when it opens, but when it does, you know there's going to be energy. So again, we've got a full bloom, uh, which is a typical macro shot of this dahlia, um, but the bud there that has so much energy, so much potential. This ha does is a signature piece in the sense that it has a texture in the background, um, an artistic texture, simply because it was sort of a fun, um, I kind of thought it was a cotton candy kind of dahlia. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's that bud that's that's got all of the energy. Now, how do you pick your vase to put this in? Is this something that was just in your house, or do you go out and search for it? Or? So a small antique store um, on the North Shore in Mass. Um, I go and I buy antique bottles. Uh, they're not terribly expensive, but you could use anything, mason jars, old tin cans, whatever helps you tell the story of that flower. Mm, I've gotten very much into antiques and tag sales. 
where have they been all my life? And you can find such amazing items at a very reasonable price. So I, I understand what you're saying. Now, in, in your slideshow or in your program, you move on and you say that you can capture emotions and create impact with your pictures. And we have some slides that talk about that and help explain what do you mean. What do you mean? How do you capture the impact? So, so there's a reason uh, when we go out as photographers that we lift our camera. Uh, we're moved. And I ask photographers, why do you go out at 4 in the morning and stand on a freezing cold beach to capture sunrise? Why do you stop on a highway or on a back road and get out with all of your gear? Because you're moved. You're inspired as a photographer. The thing that happens is that we are in all too much of a hurry to set up our equipment. We forget to be present to that inspiration. That is true. I enjoy the whole journey. I enjoy the car ride. Mm. I enjoy the looking. I enjoy seeing something. And if I don't have my camera with me and this happens and I see a, something phenomenal, then I get mad that I don't carry my camera all the time. Right. Uh, so do, do you carry your camera a lot? or? I don't. Um, I do some photojournalism for the local paper on the North Shore on the Tritown Transcript. Um, so I, that's, I use that quite a bit. So when I can let it rest, I do. But when it is creative time, um, I know it and I do take it with me. Uh, and remember that when, I, when you're out as a photographer and you are inspired by something, that's the piece that you want to bring back to your viewer. You don't want to forget and, and be in a hurry to click your shutter. You want to be able to include the things in the frame that made you feel that made you, that shared an emotion in you, and that's what you want to bring to your viewer. I think this is going to stay with me for the rest of my life. We're doing a segment here, but as a lover of photography, I think I will keep you with me for the rest of my life in, in my head and do these kinds of things. I think we have another image to show you, um, and you can talk about that particular image. Oh my God. Okay, so, so another interesting choice. Um, a nice story about this, this tulip. I started out attracted to this tulip because it has those great red tendrils at the top. Uh, it has beautiful petals. I started to shoot it. I was very frustrated, so I took my own advice and I backed up. And what I immediately noticed was that leaf. Um, this is all natural light. Uh, that leaf is very comforting to the tulip. It looks almost as if it's in an affectionate, compassionate position. It does. Correct. So it's the posture of that tulip that really attracted me to it. So uh, again, human compassion, human imperfection is something we all have in common. We all have that emotion in common. And when you spread human compassion, it, it, the energy can only go further and it can only be good energy. So I love this flower. I put a very warm texture behind it because it's a warm image. It's an affectionate image. Uh, and this was very important to me because it, it, it spoke of confidence and it spoke of being comforted in terms of not having to be perfect. Mm -hmm. I, and you used the word confidence and I was just reading something this morning where confidence is built in baby steps mm -hmm. that you just you don't go from being un, not confident to confident but and you shouldn't try to go from one extreme to the other but you just take baby steps every single day and that's maybe what if people who are interested in photography can do so so you gain confidence by getting closer to your struggles you gain confidence by letting go by accepting that things are not perfect and by accepting that you don't need to be perfect and by being confident in who you are. You just said something that, I, I mean, I just, I almost have to write this down. You gain confidence by being closer to your struggles? Bring your struggle closer so you can accept it and then let it go. Where did you learn that? So if you are familiar with Pima Chodron, the monk, the Buddhist monk, uh, she, she wrote a great book called Understanding Uh, she wrote a book called Taking the Leap, um, which is a wonderful book. It's like a Bible for me. Um, if you know, maybe you could email me the absolutely the, uh, Vari various YouTubes. Um, she has various YouTubes out. Also, a book up by Sean McNiff called Trust the Process, uh, which is a wonderful book and um, teaches you how to get closer to your struggles, closer to your imperfections. There are books about people with disabilities who find unique creativity because they have a certain disability. Um, uh, when Walls Become Doorways is the name of the book. 
Wow, that, that's very inspirational. Thank you so much. If you'd like to contact her through on her website, um, your website again is? www.sumcovephotography.com. And if you'd like to contact me, my website is jandoyle.tv. Thank you so much for this. Is, this is personally inspirational. Thank you, Jan. Thank you.